Arcane Studios have been making games for over two decades, with hits like Dishonored, Prey, and Deathloop. Their newest game, Redfall, is the first game that they've revealed since being acquired by Microsoft, and it has players teaming up to battle vampires. It's a new direction for the company, with added expectations, now that they're in Xbox's first party stable. What happened in Redfall is my fault. Redfall is a fictional island town in Massachusetts. After an experiment turns a group of scientists into vampires, they blot out the sun, trap the island's population, and begin to devour and recruit anyone they can find. As one of four resourceful hunters, it's up to you to take back the town. The premise shows promise, but the characters aren't given enough substance, including the ones you play as. Cutscenes play out with mostly still images and voiceover, making the plot feel static and less important. Talking to characters yields stiff conversations, further making it hard to care or invest in anyone's well-being. The main vampire lords receive the most attention, but it's not enough to elevate the story past forgettable. Not Puerto Rico pretty, but still. The highlight of Redfall is the titular town. Cozy neighborhoods are scattered between ominous forests with landmarks like the local movie theater and various shops and facilities. Sometimes interiors are reused, but many of the primary buildings offer nice vibes with interesting things to look at. Unfortunately, while there are a lot of spots to explore for optional loot and supplies, there isn't a strong enough incentive to do so unless you have a specific objective. The things you find in one random house are essentially the same as another. At least, aesthetically, the window dressing provides a compelling backdrop to send vampires back to hell. The majority of the game involves shooting human cultists and vampires, but sadly, the combat fails to produce engaging scenarios. Shootouts usually take place in wide open spaces or cramped interiors, and it quickly becomes repetitive. The enemy AI is abysmal, even on higher difficulties, and they use the same two tactics the entire game. Humans stand in the open with no cover or try to run for cover to pick you off from a distance. Much of the time, they simply fail to react or fight back, which makes them easy to pick off. They can do a fair amount of damage, however, resulting in some cheap deaths from enemies off screen when they do happen to notice you exist. They're also very easy to sneak past or kill from behind by crouching and using a melee attack, but it takes longer, so just shooting everything that moves is almost always faster and more efficient. Fighting vampires is slightly more interesting as there are a handful of different types, each with their own abilities. The standard type can teleport around and tries to rush and claw you. Siphons attempt to leech your health, while the angler hooks you from a distance and deals big damage. The only way to fully kill them is to shoot them enough to weaken them, then getting close and use a stay. For a while, it can be pretty entertaining to watch them explode in clouds of fire and ash, but the lack of variety in both combat and visual aesthetics eventually saps away the excitement. Each character has three special abilities and their own set of perks to unlock on a skill tree. For example, Remy has a robot companion that can aggro enemies, her C4 can damage groups with a powerful blast, and her ultimate ability lays down a healing circle. And each of these skills can be upgraded to add different effects. The abilities are fine, but because of cooldowns, it's tempting to wait until you actually need them, which honestly isn't very often. Even during multiplayer, when you can combine each hero's powers, they just aren't interesting or utilized in a meaningful way failing to make combat more interesting. Up to four players can group up to take on the vampire hordes, but even Arcane recommends playing solo or duos. With multiple players, it's harder to appreciate the best part of Redfall, the environment, as things get chaotic while combat remains just as uninteresting. Difficulty scaling is uneven for players at different experience levels, which can make firefights frustrating. One of the most unacceptable aspects of Redfall is that mission progress is only saved for the host player, making the prospect of joining another player's game a real bummer. Nice one. Loot is a primary pillar of Redfall, and items can be found scattered throughout the island. Weapons have color-coded rarity, and they range from pistols, shotguns, and assault rifles to ultraviolet lasers and stake launchers. The UV lasers are a standout, and after blasting a vampire with enough light, they'll turn to stone, setting up a satisfying smash. Finding legendary loot also has a noticeable impact on damage output, with some weapons remaining viable for hours at a time. Some guns have perks, but even legendary drops have generic stats like additional stagger damage or accuracy, making finding them less exciting than it should be. 
Picking up supplies and trash quickly becomes tedious, but thankfully, it's automatically converted into currency, which can be spent on refilling ammo or purchasing supplies at safe houses. Like much of Redfall, the currency is almost useless since you acquire loot organically as you play, with the only useful purchases being occasionally refilling ammo or lockpicking tools. The mission objectives don't do the combat encounters any favors and end up being repetitive and sometimes tedious. They typically task you with traveling to a location to find or kill something. Unfortunately, killing that something often feels trivial. There's a shred of hope early on when you learn you can approach locations differently, like picking a lock on a side door or going in through a roof, but it never gets deeper than that. You can never be locked out of an objective, so breaking a lock never feels rewarding since there's always an alternative. At least when you're in the vicinity of certain objectives, you have to actually search the area and find it, which can be a nice way to appreciate the environments. There are also side missions you can undertake for the survivors, but aside from a few voice lines, you never feel like you're making a meaningful impact on the world. The worst quests are the safe house quests, which you must complete in order to access the major boss fights. It's a mind-numbing routine that would be alleviated if the bosses were anything special, but aside from their distinct looks, these combat encounters don't bring anything new. God, Visually, Redfall is technically ugly, but the art style is cozy and locations are enjoyable to look at. On Xbox, it currently only runs at 30 frames per second with frequent performance dips, but nothing game-breaking. A handful of bugs have also been present, like enemies that don't see you, floating objects, and other assorted issues, but for the most part of our 15-hour playthrough, the game functioned well enough. Redfall is an epic miss from Arcane. The combat is mind-numbing, the quests are uninspired, co-op is a bummer, and the story doesn't reach its potential. The only saving grace is its setting, but it's pulled down by everything else. While co-op is the focus of the marketing, it doesn't feel like a priority in Redfall's design. There is some basic enjoyment in the solo campaign if you want to turn your brain off, explore the town, and blast some goons, but there are easily better alternatives out there. Nobody ever believes things can get this bad. Until it happens. Then, it's too late. Final score, 5 out of 10. Thanks for watching our review. We're Easy Allies. We've been writing about games for decades, and we also do podcasts, streams, shows, and more, all funded by regular viewers just like you. Head to patreon.com slash easyallies to pitch in and get rewards. And be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay connected on YouTube. See you soon.